Mr. X with the Extreme Channel, and we got another addition to the Extreme Collection. Funny story. I was in Disney World checking out Galaxy's Edge, Hollywood Studios, and in one of the stores they had some sideshow stuff. Uh, Star Wars stuff, obviously. And they had Ray Premium Format, and I'd never seen it in person. And I was really impressed, obviously. And I have two funny stories, because I always have two things. First, the uh, salesman or whoever worked there comes up to me, saw me and my son looking at it, and he's like, that's pretty neat, huh? I was like, yeah, I, I'm impressed how good it looks in person. He goes, just so you know, these are really expensive. Anyway, I found that funny. I didn't say a word. I go, really? And second, if you guys watched my video of why I went broke uh, this in September, I don't know when this is going to air, uh, I practice hashtag restraint on her. Good job, Mr. X. Good job. Mr. X with the Extreme Channel here with Sideshow Ray Premium Format. This is made by Sideshow Collectibles and it is Ray from the newest Star Wars trilogy, which includes The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, and I can't even remember the name of Episode 9. This is Star Wars Episode 15 for this channel, meaning it is the 15th Star Wars piece we have reviewed. And I'm really excited to have her. I was really on the fence, as I said in the intro, I saw her at Disney World in person. I thought she looked pretty good. So I put my feelers out on eBay and I was able to nab her and BB-8. I've already dropped BB-8 review uh, for $200 under retail. So I couldn't resist, well I could resist. I am a little worried that Sideshow is gonna come out with an even better one since the episode nine's coming out. But I guess I took that risk. And if they do, this will really drop in value. But I purchased her to continue to add to the Extreme Star Wars collection. I told myself a long time ago, other than Vader, because he's a great villain, I'm not going to go down the Star Wars path. Well, hashtag restraint did not work in that situation. Went ahead and purchased her. Now, Sideshow Collectibles, the, as I said, this is their premium format. That means she's one-fourth the size of what she'd be in real life. So let's actually do some measurements. Depending on how you place her uh, bow on the back here, she's about 20 inches tall. Again, check Sideshow for exact measurements. And width, width and depth is kind of hard because you, it, I don't know how you're going to position her. Technically, if you want her facing forward, the width is about 9 inches and the depth is about 10. But you can kind of display her at multiple different angles. She retailed at $480. This is one of Sideshow's last pieces because Sideshow has lost the Star Wars license. And I, I shouldn't use the word lost. They no longer have it. So maybe they didn't pay for it. Maybe they did something wrong and got their hands slapped. Which is kind of disappointing because Sideshow has done some decent Star Wars pieces. Retailed at $480 and they made 1,750 of these. Of those, 500 were the exclusive edition. With Sideshow, an exclusive edition generally means a little extra Easter egg. This is not the exclusive edition. I really wanted the ex exclusive d edition because it comes with uh, this extra Rebel Fighter Pilot helmet. However, it is completely sold out and people try and rob you for just that extra little piece. So I can live without it. Plus, I would really want to pair her with BB-8. Here's what they look like together. And I'll talk about it now, even though we're still talking about background info. One big fail they have is the sand is different colors between them, completely different colors. That's, that's a shame. And I, I, who knows, it could just be they were done at different times and different ba batches. Kind of like if you uh, buy carpet in the store, they come in different batches, so it may not look exactly like it is in the store. Just there's a lot of products out there like that. But let's jump into the uh, concept and design of this. So Rey is the newest Jedi taking the place of Luke who uh, you know took the place of Obi-Wan and 
Anakin in the prequels. And this is a representation of her in the first movie, in The Force Awakens, on her supposedly home planet, which we'll find out in episode nine if this, maybe this aired already. I don't know if this is aired before or after that came out. What her home planet actually is. And her home planet is, is uh, Jakku, as far as we know, at least that we first discover her on. And it's just like Tatooine. It's a very sandy planet and she's homeless. Um, she's very poor. She's a scavenger. She has to do everything she can to uh, survive. And she's a badass too. She, it's, it's a rough planet. And this is representing her in a museum pose. Museum means she's kind of posing for a picture in the sands, looking to the future, looking for a better way of life, looking for her parents. Some of the questions we hopefully will get answered. It's probably gonna piss a lot of us off if they don't answer these questions, even though they're supposed to. And kind of a heads up, my opinion, you know, episode nine trailer came out and it showed her uh, wielding red lightsabers, which are typically dark side uh, Sith lightsabers. You guys know that it was just like a 30 second part of the movie. Uh, my grandfather told me that. So it, it's, it's a 30 second part of the movie. It's her imagining it or the emperor, you know, putting it in her head. She doesn't turn into a Sith because first of all, if she did, they wouldn't, wouldn't let that spoiler out at all. Some of the biggest things that they're trying to do nowadays to really shock people is, uh, keep the spoilers in there. Kind of like, if you didn't know this, this is a pretty big one in empire strikes back. At the end of the movie, when Darth Vader's fi fighting Luke, Darth Vader's lines were, Obi-Wan killed your father, uh, or Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. Obi-Wan killed your father. And Luke goes, no, that's not true. That's impossible. That was kept under wraps and back before internet was big and all that. And it was at the first screening for the employees that they heard the voiceover, I am your father. They didn't even know. So anyway, they keep stuff secret, like kind of like Avengers uh, Infinity War. I was able to keep that on the hush for four or five days. I didn't know Thanos won in that movie. If you haven't seen it, Thanos wins. But anyway, back to the design. Design is really good. I'm not a fan of mixed media, but everything works pretty well. Uh, her mixed media uh, covers up her uh, head seam. I don't know why there's a head seam because there's not a switch out. I do worry about the longevity of her pouch because it's you know mixed media, it could wear out over time. I like the fact you can place the bow however you want it. I don't understand what she's doing with her right hand back here. Um, that's weird to me, you can't really put the bow on it. Maybe you can and I just haven't figured out how. Another interesting thing we're gonna look at is all of her clothes are mixed media except these straps on her arm, they're sculpt and they're actually very good. But uh, design wise, no complaints, no big issues. Now let's jump into the paint and sculpt. And one of the reasons I purchased this, or I thought it looked really good, was I think they did a good job with the likeness of Ray, which we'll obviously look at her portrait very closely. I just, uh, if, if you ever see me do weird looks, I just had one because I didn't know if the camera was recording. Sucks, I've done that a couple times where you record the entire review and then the camera wasn't recording, or the mic was off. And then you go to edit it and you, Yeah, pain in the ass. But let's dive into her base here. Really well done base. The sand looks real. I like the flow of it. I don't think it would be this symmetrical in real life, but it it the, they did it for the statue. I also like the fact that it overflows, that the sand itself is the base. There's really no sub base. And there's different pieces, uh, you know, scavenger pieces of ships or metal buried in here. I like that a lot and it's very tarnished. And then the front of it kind of has, you know, maybe it's her home, her ship she's living in, her abandoned ship. It's uh, busted. It looks really, really good. I like the colors, I like the sculpt on it. Big fan of the base. I think, I think props to Sideshow on that. Her boots, I'm not a fan of. Uh, I don't know how accurate they are to the movie, but they look like plastic. They don't look that cool. There is some texture on it. Uh, I like how they added some of the sand color on the paint. So it looks like some of the sand is on her boots without actually sculpting sand onto her boots. But I just don't like it. Uh, and it's not necessarily a paint or sculpt issue. They look like alligator shoes. And then as we see with most females, you see a little bit of her skin here. Um, they typically don't do a lot of definition in female legs. No company seems to. Uh, she's very pale. 
which doesn't make sense because she's out in the sun so often, but it, so I think they missed that. She could have been a little bit darker. And then moving up her Aladdin pants here, I think these are very accurate to the movie, and I like how they added kind of torn rags, kind of her sash that's uh, from her shoulder all the way down to her legs, and it's ripped and torn. And then moving up, she has her leather uh, pouch here, and this rope in the middle, and, and the rope, I can't tell whether it's sculpted or not. I don't want to touch it too much, but the rope holding the leather pouch or the leather belt together. The leather belt itself is mixed media, and same with her pouch on the side. It looks really good though. Like I said, I'm not a fan of mixed media, but I do like this. The strap for her bow going across her chest. And then again, you kind of see her, her sash over her shirt. Good colors, good representation of the movie. Here's a quick shot of her back. One thing I don't like is the underside of the leather here. I, I wish they would have made it leather on both sides. But because of the way it's entwined in, you see the back side of it. And let's look at the bow. The bow looks great. I love the uh, sculpt of the extra layering on it. I love the ends of it. The tips really reminds me of something imperial. Probably where she got it. And then let's take a look at those sculpted bandages I talked about on her arms. They look fantastic. Really great sculpt. I like the coloring. I like that it's different than her outfit because it really adds some contrast to the statue. Very mummy-like. Reminds me of Dream Figure's mummy that I have. And then on her wrist, she has kind of this sculpted uh, wristlet with uh, mixed media leather wrapping around it. And I, I'll have to, at least her left wrist, I'll have to look at the movie to see how accurate that is. And that's only on her left uh, wrist. Then good sculpt on her fingers. I think her fingernails are a little too clean. I don't think she bathed regularly. And I think she had some dirt in, her, in uh, uh, kind of on her skin and face in the movie. But here you see her portrait. She has no dirt on it. And I understand why they did that, even though it's not conceptually accurate. But I think they did a fantastic job on the likeness of her portrait here. And I like the expression because it's very vague. So it really ties into the statue. She's, like I said, maybe she's looking into the future. You know, if they make her too happy, too mad, too angry, too scared, it may not tie into what you want to believe with the statue. But uh, eyebrows uh, are painted on. They're not sculpted, but they look sculpted. So I like how they did that. Her eyes, they did a fantastic job. They look real, kind of this glistening effect. Lips pursed together, and her skin color, I think, it w it's a little darker in the movie, but it doesn't look bad here. I think they could have done a better job with her hair. Uh, it's not sculpted deep enough. I think they should have sculpted it deeper to add more strands to it. And I don't like where it meets up on the face. It's a little too clean around her forehead here but it doesn't take away too much from the statue. Her classic hairstyle on the back. Kind of the new Princess Leia, remember the ear things? Now it's three on the back, I guess. I don't know, I don't braid women's hair, at least not often. But uh, yeah, I like it. I think it's a great piece, especially the fact the retail's 480 and you can get it for less than that. I. I will be shocked as hell if they don't do another Ray piece with, you know, because in theory, she doesn't even have a lightsaber in this one. So, yeah. Hopefully, the new one's not better uh, because that will increase the value of this piece. But I would like to have a Ray with a lightsaber piece. I also, I think I talked about this in the BB 8 review. I really want a good Luke Skywalker. I'm not a fan of any of the Luke Skywalkers that have come out. And unfortunately, because Sideshow has lost their Star Wars license or they no longer have it. Uh, really, it's Iron Studios or XM Studios. I was talking to uh, PJ, Paradox Nerd. Go check out that channel. Uh, he's a huge Star Wars collector, both uh, quarter scale and, and hot toys, and he has excellent content. Plus, he's fun to go camping with. So, I'm going to stop saying so. So, thank you for watching. See what I did there. Uh, give me a thumbs up 
Uh, if this is your first time watching, definitely hit that subscribe and bell. I drop lots and lots of statue reviews and extreme content. We're kind of branching out, but we're always going to stick close to the collecting and statue stuff. So, 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 so,